Martha, obviously not knowing anything about the fire service, said that we used chemicals to put fires out back then. That's what the chemical companies were. But they were used to propel the water from the uh, tanks on board the apparatus. These were displaced with the new motorized apparatus coming in in the teens and up through the 20s because they had the booster equipment with a, a pump that could be geared into the gasoline motor to provide the booster hose. Why these companies were so critical was because of the length of time it took to get a stream going from a steam engine with the uh, with a hose reel or with the uh, wagon coming in. It took a little bit of time to get a big line in operation and there were countless occasions where these chemicals com companies got in there, ran that booster line and held the fire in check or extinguished it before it could uh, extend to any uh, serious proportions. But you can see there are quite, quite a few firehouses in the city. Those of you who are really interested in this history, I'm sure you could look at that map for uh, hours on end. You can see we had 47 engines back then, 29 ladder companies, 14 chemicals, and three fireboats. Immediately after that, there was ladder 29, 30, and 31 were added to the department. This also reflects the uh, high pack addition I don't believe ladder 28 was on there at the time. But it gives you a good sense of the number of firehouses, the density of them downtown. And we're only about, uh, well, today we have 33 engines, 22 ladders, no chemicals. Of course, we have two rescues now and a uh, pretty good, strong marine division. Here's some of the firehouses that are still standing from 100 years ago that are still in service. Over in East Boston on Saratoga Street, we have Engine Five's house. Uh, below that, Peabody Square, where Engine 18 and Ladder 6 are currently. That has been remodeled into a two-door firehouse. Boylston Street, everybody thinks that's the oldest house in Boston, which gets everybody from Engine 50 hopping mad. <laughs> <laughs> they, they say, we're the oldest firehouse in Boston. And the uh, Engine 50 is at 34 Winthrop Street in Charlestown, uh, which was occupied by Chemical 3 100 years ago. That house is still there. Up on the top, 1940 Center Street, West Roxbury, still houses Engine 30, Ladder 25. When I was commissioner, we did a major renovation on that firehouse, including uh, putting a sprinkler system in. So that house meets code. Below that, Engine 21 in Dorchester. That's the second house on that location. And that house has a little bit of history. It's the only one in Boston with that Spanish uh, type architecture with a stucco finish. That was built by James Michael Curley uh, he got blocked out from being a delegate, I think it was the 1932 presidential convention. He wasn't allowed to be a delegate from Boston, so he relocated down to Puerto Rico, became a delegate down there, Miguelio, Curlio, or something his name was. <laughs> he, he got into the convention and he was heard. On his return to Boston, he said, we need a, a Spanish-style firehouse. I saw a nice one in Puerto Rico, and there it is. One of the busiest houses in Boston. Another old handsome building up in Grove Hall, Engine 24, Ladder 23, occupying that building, a very beautiful building. Uh, over in Meeting House Hill, Engine 17, Ladder 7. That's the second uh, building, actually probably the third building on that site since it replaced two separate firehouses. In the early 60s, they took the top floor off that building to save heat, and uh, there hasn't been a roof on that building that hasn't leaked since. <laughs> so they didn't do it to the other houses. They're going to do it to those four houses that were built by the WPA. They never got to it, though. This is how the districts and divisions lined up back in 1912. Division 1 worked out of uh, Ladder 8's house, and Division 2 was out of Ladder 4's house on Dudley Street. And there were the districts. We had 15 districts uh, back then. 13th district was the marine division in the harbor. That's why the red tag is out there. Here's how the department shaped up personnel-wise. And uh, just to give you a sense of uh, the on-duty strength, currently the Boston Fire Department carries 277 members on duty. Back then the firefighters were working a day off and three schedule, which meant it would work three days and be off one. So three quarters of the force was on duty at any one time, which meant about 550 firefighters would be on duty. But the threat of fire in the Boston uh, was such a huge threat, particularly downtown. The, uh, the hazards that we looked at earlier, the waterfront, the manufacturing districts, the mercantile district, and now thousands of three-deckers being built in the city. The hazard was huge. Here's what the uh, pay scale looked like. They got a raise in uh, June 1st, 1912, and that's what the salaries were brought up to. Uh, the mayor of Boston, by the way, back then was getting $10,000 a year 
which was uh, phenomenal. I guess that was to keep them honest. But they were paid quite well. I don't think that always worked out as it was planned, but they tried. <laughs> Look at some of the old steam as it was soon to be replaced. This is at engine 18's quarters, free horse hitch. These steam engines, I was told, they used to run at about 20 miles an hour. Nice picture of engine uh, 7's wagon. Uh, when they were getting rid of these old husk-drawn wagons, there was a fire commissioner named Murphy, and he had a good idea. They took some of them, and they made sleighs out of them. They actually put runners where the wheels were on those axles, and they left them in the backyards of some of the firehouses to be used in uh, serious snowstorms. They'd actually go around and get some of the local husses. There were husses in Boston. I, I know in South Boston, up through the 1970s, and I think Dooley's barn burned in, in around 1980. And you could go out and rent husses and get them. So they had them, and I, when I was a little kid in Southie, I remember seeing one up at Engine Two's old house that was in the backyard. So that was because of Commissioner Murphy that they kept them. Nice picture of Engine 22 with the husses running through the uh, south end. Engine uh, 4 on Washington Street, downtown Boston. And this is one of my favorite pictures of Engine 33's. Uh, pump up coming right at us, the steamer behind it is their wagon. I was just reading another piece, uh, when they were going to respond to a fire, the wagon would go first and the steamer would be second. If they were going to go cover another company, the steamer would go first. So they're apparently on their way to cover someone. But that's a, a great photograph. Let's take it right outside Horticultural Hall, Symphony Hall would be to your uh, left there. This one's a good picture of engine 15, just showing the configuration of uh, those wagons back then. Uh, the labor side of the fire department really hasn't changed a heck of a lot in 100 years. Still comes down to uh, strong backs and uh, determined men to, and women to put out fires, but that's a nice picture of engine 15, showing the split hose bed in the back. They're connecting up a hose line there. A couple of steamers at work. It's out in Brighton, engine 26, engine 37. Uh, one of the things they had to do at fires was lead the husses away generally. You'll see some pictures where they don't. But generally, they took the husses away and took good care of them. They didn't want them in close to the fires. This is a nice shot of Engine 3's Amoscape pump. You can see the, uh, the detail work, the, uh, the pressure dome, the outlet. Uh, these, these pumped, uh, I believe this one was up around uh, 500 gallons per minute. Not a lot by today's standards. But that's a real nice picture of the, uh, the detail of the pump. This is up on Meeting House Hill. Again, a couple of steamers, how did it work? Uh, I had the pleasure of hearing a steamer work a few years back. I had never heard it, but it really sounded neat hearing the, uh, the steam, the huff and puff that these engines made. They were really fairly quiet compared to the diesels and some of the things out there today. This was Engine 29's house in Brighton, showing you all the quick hitches where the husses would run out and uh, get under their positions and they'd drop the harnesses on them and they'd be out of the door really quick. They didn't have to stop to put on bunker gear and sit down, strap themselves in with seat belts. They'd just run, get on that apparatus and go out. <coughs> An old timer I knew in South Boston, his dad was the, ended up the captain of the ladder five, but when he was a young firefighter around 1905, down at Engine One's house on Dorchester Street in South Boston, uh, one of the horses got out of the firehouse and was up running around Perkins Square and the firemen were chasing the horse trying to get him back. Obviously, this hus was fairly new to the job. He didn't know the rules. And they, were, they were chasing the hus, and they'd get up to him, and the hus would bolt a little further. Finally, his dad got the bright idea to hit the house gong back at Engine One's house. Well, he did that, and the hus heard the bell, and he charged back and got right in position, right in front of that engine. <laughs> now, part of the problem back in uh, 1912, you saw all those firehouses. They really weren't equipped for firefighters to be staying over, living in the firehouses the 24-hour days they did. Actually, they were there for uh, longer than 24-hour days. They do it three days in a row, except for their meal hours. But this is Engine 26 and 35 downtown, and uh, I'm sure they loved the job, but it got a little bit tight. The newer houses had to accommodate uh, better conditions for the firefighters, and getting rid of the horses was certainly a plus. This is two of the husses from Engine 35, uh, 26 on Mason Street, up by the Kiosk, by the Common on Tremont Street, taking them out for daily exercise to make sure they didn't get lame. The husses of Boston were really well cared for. They bought good husses, 
they took great care of them. This is the ambulance the fire department actually had for transporting the uh, horses when they had to be uh, taken over to the uh, veterinary hospital, which they had one of their own. This is the yard in Bristol Street. Now that fella bending over up by the BFD, I don't know if he's got a winch with maybe a rope on the hustler's nose. I don't know what he's doing there, but he's bending down. Looks like he might be uh, cranking something. This was the uh, veterinary hospital they actually had over on Atkinson Street. That building stood there right up through the uh, 1970s. It was abandoned, of course, back probably around 1924 when the last hustlers ran. But that building stood there abandoned for many, many years. But that was exclusively for fire hustlers. They'd bring them there for shoeing. They'd bring them there if they were sick. And uh, the horses were really well cared for. Uh, out in uh, Stowe, Mass, near the Fire Academy, if you drive out that way, you'll see a sign that says Red Acres Road. Well, there was a Red Acre farm up there, and that's where the Boston Fire Horses were retired to. They could not be.